Hello nurses and hello top notchers Welcome back to our YouTube channel So welcome ulit sa ating common board question Sa ating uh, community health nursing So ngayon pag-uusapan po natin ang about sa ating mga common board question Related to public health surveillance RA9003 17 SDGs and your global warming So umpisa na po natin ang ating common board questions Okay, so question number 13, what is the color of the bag where the nurse should place radioactive wastes? A, yellow, B, green, C, black, or D, orange. Okay, so saan mo daw itatapon nurse kapag ang isang waste product is radioactive? So meron ditong yellow bean, green bean, black bean, and your orange bean. So, as the nurse, radioactive wastes, example ng mga radioactive wastes natin ay yung mga radioisotopes, mga radium implants na ginagamit natin sa ating radiation therapy. So, in your color-coded bin, according to our uh, waste management or the healthcare waste management manual of the Department of Health, we have your five color-coded trash bin. So, we have your mnemonics here. We have your big your mnemonics. Okay? B for your black. G for your green, Y for your yellow, O for your orange, and R for your red. So, take note nurses, dalawa po yung kulay yellow natin. Yung isang yellow, may black band. Yung isang yellow, walang black band. Okay? For your black, black is for your non-infectious dry wastes. Tandaan niyo po yan. Non-infectious pero dry yung mga basura dito. And for your green, green is intended for your non-infectious wet wastes. And yellow for your infectious or the pathologic waste management and you have also your orange for the radioactive wastes and for your red for your sharp wastes okay so yun po yung ating tatandaan so saan mo daw itatabon kapag ang isang basura or waste product is radioactive so the correct answer in your question is your orange okay so orange bin po natin siya itatapon so, ano-ano po ba yung ating itatapon na waste product kapag ang kulay ng ating basurahan ay black? Okay, so take note that your black bin contains the non-biodegradable wastes or yung mga hindi na bubulok or hindi na lata. Okay, so like your paper or any paper products like newspaper, tetrapax, etc. Okay, so take note nurses that the number one waste product in the hospital is paper products. Okay, paper wastes po ang pinaka, pinaka number one na waste product sa mga hospitals. Okay, the next we have also your bottles like the glass and plastic bottles and the packaging materials like your styropor, candy wrapper and your aluminum cans. Okay, so again, so pag sinabi po natin black, black is for your non-biodegradable or the non-infectious dry wastes. Okay. Then, pagdating naman po sa ating green trash bin or the green bag, green bag contains your biodegradable wastes or yung mga nabubulok. Okay? Like your leftover foods, used cooking oil, fish entrails, scale fins, and your fruits and vegetable peelings. Okay? Yung mga nabubulok na prutas at mga gulay, dyan din po natin sila itinatapon. Again, so if we say green trash bin, ang green trash bin po natin ay intended po yan sa mga non-infectious waste products. Okay, then next we have also your yellow trash bin. Okay, so pag sinabi naman po natin yellow trash bin, yellow trash bins or trash bag contains the infectious and the pathological wastes. Okay, such as used test strips, used beads or plates, used reaction pads or foils, and the used swabs. Okay, and the used gloves, used cord clamp, used plaster, and the used mask. See? So, pag tanungin kayo sa board exam kung saan mo itatapon yung mga use N95 mask, okay? itatapon po natin yan sa ating yellow without black band. Okay? Bakit without black band? Kasi infectious pathological waste po yun, okay? So, yellow contains your infectious and pathological wastes. And pag sinabi naman po natin yellow with your black band, okay? yellow with your black band contains your pharmaceutical and your chemical Wastes. So, ano po ba itong mga pharmaceutical and chemical wastes na tinatawag natin? Okay? So, ito yung mga defective thermometer, especially yung ating mercurial, okay? O yung glass thermometer natin. So, defective thermometer, busted fluorescent bulb, yung mga pumutok o yung mga pundido ng mga, mga fluorescent bulb natin. Empty bottles of acids, betadine, iodine, alcohol, anesthetic products, and laboratory reagents like yung mga formaldehydes natin. Okay? So, pag sinabi natin yellow with black band, yan po yung mga pharmaceutical and your chemical wastes. 
And pagdating naman po sa ating orange trash bag or trash bin, orange contains the radioactive wastes or any medical equipment contaminated or exposed in radioactivity. Such yung mga equipments natin na ginagamit natin sa mga pasyenteng nag-undergo ng radiation therapy. Okay? Again, so kapag ito ay radioactive waste, saan daw po natin siya itatapon? Itatapon po natin yan sa ating orange trash bin. Then pagdating naman po sa ating red trash bag or trash bin, red contains the sharp materials, okay? It can uh, it can uh, contain the sharp materials that can cause or cut a puncture wounds. Examples ng mga sharps natin ay yung mga ginagamit natin sa ating uh, surgical suturing, the needles, ano pa, yung mga syringes natin, scalpel blades, the ampules, test tubes, broken glasses and the capillary tubes, okay? So diyan po natin itatapon yung mga used blades mga ampules na mga nabasag and yung mga needles or syringes okay so yun po yung ating mga color coded trash bin ulitin ko lang so we have your mnemonics here we have your big your mnemonics b for your black for your non infectious dry wastes g for your green and that is for your non infectious wet wastes or yung tinatawag natin na biodegradable wastes y for your yellow like your infectious or the pathological waste Kapag may black band naman, yan yung mga pharmaceutical or chemical wastes natin. And kapag orange naman yung ating color-coded trash bin, that is for your radioactive wastes. And your red trash bin is for your sharps. Okay? So, yun po yung ating color-coded trash bins. Okay, so question number 14. Which of the following items cannot be recycled? Again, so the question here is cannot be recycled. So, Alin dyan yung item na hindi pwedeng i-recycle? So, letter A, empty vials B, empty IV bottles C, kitchen meals Or the market plastic Okay, so take note Pag sinabi natin nga recycle That is putting a waste into a new use Okay? So, alin dito ang hindi pwedeng i-recycle? And alin dito ang pwedeng i-recycle? So, mag-eliminate tayo ng isang option So, una nating tatanggalin dyan Yung ating option letter C Okay? Yung kitchen meal natin Ang ating unang tatanggalin Kasi pag mga food waste products, kay mga food wastes natin, it is considered as recyclable. Okay? Yung mga pinagtinikan, yung mga balat ng ating mga saging or mga banana peels, mga rotten vegetables, mga leftover meals, that is considered as recyclable material. So, take note, we have your Republic Act 9003 or yung tinatawag natin na Ecological Solid Waste Management. So, under this Republic Act 9003, meron po tayong tinatawag ditong 5R of your environmental sanitation. Kung dati tatlo lang po yan, ngayon lima na po yan. First R is the reduce. Reduce means to minimize the amount of waste we create. Then next, we have also your reuse. Reuse means using items more than once. And R, we have your recycle. Recycle means putting a product into a new use and Recover. Okay? Recover means practice of putting waste product into use. And yung ating isa pang R, we have your refuse. Okay? Refuse wasteful and polluting products. So example, kapag sa mga market natin, mga healthy markets natin, may mga nagtitinda dyan ng mga, mga market plastic. Okay? So pwede natin i-refuse yung ating mga single-use plastic bags. Okay? So that is your 5 R's of your environmental sanitation. So, alin dito sa mga choices natin ang hindi natin pwedeng i-recycle? So, tanggal na si C, tanggal na rin si letter D. So, A or B na lang ang natitira. So, the correct answer in your question number 14 is letter A. Empty vials po ang ating sagot. Why? Because empty vials poses a health risk. Okay? So, regardless of whether or not the vial is made of glass or plastic, they should all be disposed of in the garbage when they are empty. Okay? So, even if the empty vial is made of plastic, the lid or the closure system of the vial generally contains some rubber or metal and can't be removed. This means that the item is mixed waste and cannot be recycled. So, kapag mixed waste po yung ating uh, waste product, it can't be recycled. So, the correct answer here is your letter A, the empty vial, okay? the empty drug vial. Then next, we have your question number 15. What SDG number is health-centered? A, 3, B, 6, C, 10, or D, 1. Okay, so 
If we say SDG, SDG means Sustainable Development Goal. So, alin daw dito sa mga SDG number ang health-related or health-centered SDG? Okay, so is it A, 3, B, 6, C, 10, or D, 1? So, the correct answer here is letter A. So, it is the SDG number 3. So, SDG number 3 is the health-centered SDG because it targets your health and your well-being. Yung letter B naman natin which is the SDG 6 that is all about your clean water and sanitation. Ang letter C naman natin which is the SDG 10 is all about your reducing inequalities. And for your letter D, the SDG number 1 that is all about no poverty SDG. Okay? So the correct answer here is letter A. SDG 3, health and well-being is the focus. So, health has a central position in the agenda through the SDG number 3 and is closely linked to over a dozen targets in other goals related to urban health, equal access to treatments, and non-communicable diseases among the others. So, yan po yung ating tinatawag na health-centered SDG. It is the SDG or the Sustainable Development Goal number 3. So, the Sustainable Development Goals or the Global Goals are a collection of 17 interlinked global goals designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. These SDGs were set up in 2015 by the United Nations General Assembly and are intended to be achieved by the year 2030. Okay? So, by the year 2030, yan po yung target year ng ating Sustainable Development Goals. So, what are the 17 Sustainable Development Goals? So, SDG number 1 is the goal for no poverty. Number 2 is zero hunger. Number 3, the good health and well-being. Number 4, quality education. And number 5, the gender equality. For SDG number 6, it's all about your clean water and sanitation. For SDG number 7, that is all about your affordable and clean energy. For SDG number 8, that is all about your decent work and economic growth. And for number 9, for number 9, that is all about your industry, innovation, and infrastructure. And SDG number 10, that is all about your reducing inequality. For SDG number 11, sustainable cities and communities. For SDG number 12, that is responsible consumption and production. SDG number 13 is all about your climate change action. And SDG 14 is the life below water. And SDG number 15 is all about the life on land. 16 is for peace, justice, and strong institution. And the last goal, which is the SDG number 17, is the partnership for the goals. Okay? So, number 16, what year is the target for sustainable development goals? So, sinabi natin kanina yan. So, letter A, 2020, B, 2025, C, 2030, or D, 2040. So, the target year of the sustainable development goal is on 2030. So, by the year 2030, kailangan ma-achieve ma natin or ma-meet natin yung goal natin. So, the global goal for your sustainable development goal is for uh, for a better future. So, yun po yun. So, that is transforming our world by the year 2030. So, the correct answer here is letter C. The sustainable development goals are also known as the global goals were adopted by the United Nations Member States in September 2015 as a universal call to action and to end poverty, to protect the planet, and to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by the year 2030. Okay, so by the year 2030, that is the target year of your sustainable development goals. Okay, so down to our question number 17, it's all about your greenhouse effect. So greenhouse effect refers to 
A. Ability of the atmosphere to retain water vapor B. Ability of a certain atmospheric gases to trap the heat and keep the planet relatively warm C. Ability of the cloud to scatter electromagnetic radiation or D. None of the above Okay, so greenhouse effect ang ating tinatanong dito So mag-eliminate tayo ng isang option which is very obvious na mali yung ating letter C Because letter C is all about your albedo effect Okay, pag sinabi natin albedo effect, albedo effect is the ability of the clouds, yung mga mountains, yung mga trees, yung mga snow, okay? So, that is the ability of your uh, your uh, cloud or earth surfaces to scatter and to reflect electromagnetic radiation back into the atmosphere, okay? So, kabalik na ng albedo yung greenhouse effect. So, if we say greenhouse effect, that is the ability of the certain atmospheric gases to trap the heat and keep the planet relatively warm. So, the, the correct answer here is letter B. Okay? So, pag sinabi kasi natin greenhouse effect, yan yung parang earth blanket. Okay? So, the greenhouse effect is defined as the warming of the earth surface by your atmospheric gases, especially mga greenhouse gases natin, that reflect the heat back down to the planet rather than allowing it to escape into the space. So, hindi nakakasingaw yung init ng ating daigdig okay, or ng ating earth. So, the greenhouse effect occurs when gases in the lower troposphere absorb radiation from the surface and subsequently re-emit the infrared radiation warming the atmosphere. So, kapag ganitong, ano, pag ganitong maulap, mas mainit yung earth surface kasi hindi rin nakakasingaw yung init galing sa earth surface. Okay? So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng ating, ng ating uh, greenhouse effect. Okay, so question number 18. So, which gas is not produced by greenhouses? So, A, oxygen, B, water vapor, C, methane, or D, carbon dioxide. Again, so, which gas is not produced by greenhouses? So, A, B, C, or D. So, very obvious ang ating sagot dito. The correct answer in your number 18 is letter A, oxygen. Because oxygen is not a gas produced by greenhouses. So, letter A is the correct answer. So, take note that your oxygen, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen are not greenhouse gases because they are transparent to infrared light. Okay? The primary greenhouse gases in Earth atmosphere are the water vapor. So, water vapor as the most abundant greenhouse gas okay carbon dioxide as the primary fuel for your for your uh, primary uh, primary fuel for your global warming so yan po ang pinaka number 1 na nagkukos ng global warming yang si carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is produced by primarily by uh, burning fossil fuels okay then other is your methane gas nitrous oxide and the ozone gas Okay, so next situation. So, public health nurse Magnifico is a member of the health team. There is tasked by the rural health unit to identify, define, and measure major health problems of interest. Okay, so again, so public health nurse Magnifico is a member of the health team. There is tasked by the rural health unit to identify, to define, and measure the major health problems of interest. So, question number 19. Public health surveillance includes the following activities except Okay, so negative answer po ang ating hinahanap So letter A, data analysis Letter B, data collection Letter C, disease control Or letter D, data interpretation Okay, so if we say public health surveillance Which of the following activities are included in your public health surveillance? And which one is not included? So, ang hinahanap natin dito is yung hindi kasama sa mga activities na ginagawa natin sa public health surveillance. So, syempre, pag nagsasurvey tayo, we have your data collection, data analysis, and the data interpretation. So, the correct answer here is letter C. So, hindi po natin ginagawa dito sa ating public health surveillance yung disease control. So, the term public health surveillance includes the data collection, data analysis, Data interpretation and the data dissemination okay? So public health surveillance help guides the health officials And the programs in directing and conducting the disease control and prevention activities However, surveillance does not include control or prevention activities themselves So hindi kasama doon yung disease control Only your data collection, data analysis, data interpretation and the data 
dissemination. Okay? So again, surveillance does not include the control or the prevention activities themselves. And question number 20, so public health surveillance can be best described primary as which of the following? A. Public health surveillance can be described as a system for collecting health-related information. B. Public health surveillance is a method to monitor occurrences of public health problem. C. Public health surveillance is a program to control disease outbreaks. Or letter D. Public health surveillance is a system for monitoring persons who have been exposed to communicable diseases. Okay? So, what is the best definition or description of your public health surveillance? So, best description of the public health surveillance ang hinahanap natin dito. So, take note nurses that public health surveillance is not included or not a... Not a it is not included as a system, okay? So, public health surveillance is a method, okay? It is a method to monitor the occurrences of your community health problems. So, public health surveillance can be thought as one of the methods that a community has available to monitor the health among its population by detecting the problems, communicating alerts as needed, and guiding the appropriate response and evaluating the effect of the response. So, surveillance should not be confused with the medical surveillance, which is the monitoring of the exposed person to detect early evidence of the disease. So, yun naman yung kasi yung ating uh, tinatawag na medical surveillance. So, public health surveillance is the continued watchfulness for public health problems and it is not a data collection system again so public health surveillance is not uh, is not a considered as a system or data collection system so it is a method okay it is a method to monitor the occurrences of your public health problems so the correct answer here in your question number 20 is letter b okay public health surveillance can be thought as one of the method that a community has available to monitor the occurrences of a certain health problem. So, take note that the essence of the public health surveillance is the use of data to monitor the health problems to facilitate their prevention or control. Yan po yung uh, importance ng ating public health surveillance. That is a method used to monitor the health problems occurring in a certain community. Okay? That is to facilitate their prevention and its control so again so in your question number 20 public health surveillance can be best described as correct answer is letter b a method to monitor occurrences of a public health problem okay so pag tinanong naman kayo sa board exam kung paano naman natin kinokolect yung ating mga data okay so data collected through which of the following method is commonly used for surveillance? So, it is commonly uh, collected via vital registration, disease notifications, and population surveys. Okay, so, take note that the randomized clinical trials is not included. Okay, it is not included as a method in your data collection used for surveillance. So, only vital registration, disease notification, and population surveys. Yang tatlong lang, uh, tatlong yan lang ang pwede natin gamitin for your surveillance. So, vital registration records, disease notification, and the population surveys. Again, randomized clinical trials is not included. So, data collected through vital registration, disease notification, and population surveys are commonly used for surveillance of health-related problems. Sabi dito, data from randomized clinical trials typically cover only a specially selected population and are used to answer specific questions about the effectiveness of a particular treatment. So, data from randomized clinical trials are not useful for surveillance. Okay? So, that is your uh, data collected from vital registration, disease notification, and population surveys, which are commonly used for your surveillance of health-related problems.